Wondery Plus subscribers can listen to Just Jack and Will early and ad-free. Find Wondery Plus in the Wondery app or on Apple Podcasts. Eric? <laughs> is it? What is it? <laughs> it is Eric, yeah. But, but what's your last name? Uh, I got it right here. <laughs> uh, McCormack. <laughs> oh! It's, it's Irish. It's on the tip of my tongue. Eric McCormack. Um, Hi, buddy. Hi, Pally. Guys, welcome to the show. This is so exciting. This is so thrilling. This is Just Jack and Will. Every week, we'll be breaking down an episode of Will and Grace, telling you behind-the-scenes stories, getting into the details of how every episode was made. Every week, we're going to have a special guest, maybe the guest star from that episode, maybe one of our creators or our director or the writer of the episode, and they'll be teaching us everything they can remember and sometimes blowing our minds with facts about the process that we never even knew about. I know. I'm so excited. This episode, though, is going to be a little bit different. We're calling this one our episode zero, which is also my nickname in high school. In this one, we're basically catching up, asking each other questions about our careers leading up to the Will and Grace pilot. We're going to be learning things we never knew about each other and right. setting the stage for the next episode where we'll dive into the pilot and have one of our co-creators, Max Muchnick, as our special first guest. Yes, yes, yes. Now, I, I want to tell people... Yes. Why this podcast? How this started? Do you remember where? Yeah, like why? Like what? So we, so one of our many lunches, right? We're sitting there at one of my favorite restaurants, which is now hopefully one of your favorite restaurants. And we're eating, I'm eating like a, a nine pound bowl of pasta as usual. <laughs> and uh, and we were talking, we were talking about what's probably, going on. I probably had fish. You probably did have fish. That's why you look better than me. And um, we were talking about like, of course, life and work and everything that you do as friends talk about. And they were talking about like this show and we're talking about podcasting. And we just kind of looked at each other like, what about a Will and Grace, like rewatch podcast and uh, you said that We're, we, I, I said yeah. So, so we we can I said we can both watch the episodes again. Yeah, and Sean basically said, "Well, yeah. When you say again, yeah." I said, "Yeah." Mm -hmm. said, I I've never really never really watched watch the, the show, and I, I I threw my fish across the restaurant. <laughs> I dumped your pasta in your I'm lap. I said, right. "What are you talking about?" <laughs> yeah, where where you you admittedly wa maybe watched them too much. <laughs> right and they're like home movies to me I, over the yeah. years my wife and i will watch them in bed yeah i love that and we suddenly realized we had very different experiences and have a very different relationship <laughs> right to right. the show right and then to be at lunch with you and have you go yeah i don't think i've seen it since, since it was first on the air and i never yeah. watched the reboot i was like wait a minute <laughs> yeah yeah i never wa i haven't seen one episode of the reboot and i saw you know, I just saw like the first time it aired on TV, wait, you know, 25 years ago, whatever it was. And, uh, but I don't remember any of it. I remember like, you know, like I'll walk in the room and Scotty be flipping through the, Scotty, my husband, will be flipping through the channels and it'll come on and I'll pause and I'm like, oh God, I can't. And that's like 15 <laughs> seconds or 30 seconds. And then I was like, and then at lunch you were like, you should really watch it. It's really great. And I was like, yeah, well, let's do this show and watch it together. And it's kind of cool. Like, I, I can't wait. Yes. It's going to be wild. It's It'll be a voyage of rediscovery for me and a, of discovery for you. Yeah. And uh, and hopefully you uh, you all listening will have a great time as, as Sean goes, oh my God, I said that? Yeah. <laughs> right. Week after week. <laughs> I just sort of put the math together today. We're doing this show exactly 25 years to the month that you and I got hired. Isn't that crazy? To do Wait, this 25 years? Yeah, because I was just thinking about it. It would have been late January that I got the part. I started doing auditions with, with women to play Grace. And I think you, right around now, you were at Sundance. That's right. Oh, my God. I can't believe you remember with that. Your, yeah. And, and they were. And I said, Who, who's going to play Jack? And they said... We're pursuing Sean Hayes and he's in this There's big, uh, Richard, Hollywood because Richard Simmons wasn't available. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> so I, 25 years ago, right now, we are celebrating Isn't this that crazy? thing that got born. How about, here's a little bit of trivia. Do you remember the date that we, that we filmed the pilot? I, hmm. 
I want to say April like 12th. It's March 17th, no. which is St. Patrick's Day, and we're both Irish, so we should know that. We should. You're absolutely right, right. except I could have sworn it was April. But you see, that's the value of looking back, Sean. <laughs> of We're doing look this. look back with the, at, at this little show that got born around us, thank God. Yeah. And, um, and I was thinking about our friendship. I was thinking about mm-hmm. the friendship between Jack and Will, mm-hmm. but also between Eric and Sean. Yeah. And it led me to the bigger thing of, of, I think, the reason television is what it is for people and has been for decades. Oh, well, we're getting it. We're getting we're going deeper. Yeah, really we fast. are because it's different. It's different than films uh, where the characters yeah. are bigger than life, from, and it's different than stage. We expect the people that we watch week after week. Well, we, I, I think we expect two things, particularly of sitcom characters. A, we expect that, that we, we can show up in their lives. They're, they're our friends. We love them. We embrace right. them. We can't right. wait to see them. But we also expect and hope that they're friends together, that this friendship we see on screen is right, is real. And I was just, just yes, like yesterday I was in Atlanta and a woman saw me and went, where's Grace? You know, for years, that's a question that I always <laughs> she's in my of, She's in my luggage. Yeah. <laughs> I always say, still fictional. Uh, but yeah. you know, it's, it's like, you, <laughs> yeah. they don't want to believe I know, believe it's so that. true. They, they absolutely. Right. People get blown away. Like, they're like, wait, you and Eric are friends. And why wouldn't we? Like, aren't you friends with your, some of your coworkers? You know, like. Right. But, I, yeah. but this is what I like about this little exploration that we're starting here is that our friendship grew, changed, went away, came back. I, I feel I feel richer and deeper about you yes. now than I ever have, Likewise. despite Likewise. 11 years working together and, and breaks in between. So yeah. I love that we got where we got 25 years later, and I love exploring how it started. I know. I, by the way, beautifully said. That's why whenever we would do, I was I was twenty seven. Yeah, twenty seven when we shot the pilot. Yeah. And e- even then, just just how you just so beautifully said that and so eloquently said that. That's where I fail and where I looked up to you for so long and still do. Is like you're you 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 have that gift of like the English language, and you're from Canada, which is weird because they don't do they speak English up there. <laughs> those, those don't go together. <laughs> well, you know that, but that is an interesting part of of our friendship, which um, which there's eight years between us. By the time Will and Grace came along, or at least the audition for it, I was 34. So yeah, you were probably 26 when you first yeah read for the parts. I don't know what you were told about me, but I, I, I said, who's playing Jack? They said, oh, my God, we've got this guy. He's unbelievably funny. He is so funny. You know, so it's like, oh, no. <laughs> and then I walk in, you're like, no, but seriously. No, but seriously. <laughs> but I mean, so that's, it's always an interesting, uh, what I love about the theater, what I've always loved about my career is that I get to make new friends all the time. But yeah. if yeah. it's a play, they go away in six weeks. If it's yeah. a big hit television series, they're, they're, they're your family for family life. for sure for sure isn't that wild i you know everybody you hear that all the time it's you know i don't know if it sounds cliche to people but in our business it's like well we're like a family but it's like yeah you i saw you guys a thousand times more than i saw any of my own friends and family so like before the show right, right? before the show started all my own friends and then i was like oh these guys oh this is what the stars aligned and brought us together and here we are and we make love together every single day <laughs> well, but, people, uh, people wanted to believe and i think uh, what four years before us was friends of which changed the game and and yeah. that was people could see that they were all young and friends instantly and they hung out together all the time yeah, And the four of us had a much more, what I would call a more concentrated sort of experience. We didn't necessarily hang out a whole lot outside of stage 17. Right, right. But those five hours that we'd spend together every day were so concentrated on making each other laugh. Yeah. Uh, making the writers sure. laugh. You made me, pee, you used to make me pee in my pants laughing. <laughs> <laughs> the show to me is, I mean, it came along, I think that's why the age thing we were talking about before it matters. Right. You were young. You had the world ahead of you. You This Never might have been a TV show. show. I was like 35. I'd been around and it was like, it was time to make it or break it. I yeah. recognized this show as the thing that I needed, particularly because I loved Seinfeld and I loved musty TV and I thought, I got to kill Yeah, me. I so know. I put all my sort of eggs in that basket and, and loved it. 
You yeah. know, I can see now. I watching mean, don't it. you think it's going to be embar- like embarrassing? Like, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to see. I'm, first of all, when we when I have caught like ten seconds, twenty seconds here and there, whatever through the years, I'm like, I don't even know who that person is. Do you feel like that? Like, I don't know who that right. actor or human being is, and it's me. But I don't feel like it's me. We'll be exploring this in the coming weeks as we watch the first season. But yeah. you are you are a fetus. You are so young. <laughs> it, you, know, you are absolutely baby faced and this great little spiky hair. <laughs> they had to feed me baby food every day. <laughs> Let's go back and for for uh, the people watching or listening that. Um, that maybe don't know uh, what, where you and I came from before we yeah. were hatched from the eggs that are Will and Jack. Yeah. Um, you, th- I'm going to let you tell this part because it amazed me. I assumed that you came out of improv and you were hilarious and I didn't know where, what you'd actually graduated <laughs> from. <laughs> well, I didn't graduate from anywhere. <laughs> it, well, you, well you, but you have a conducting Degree. Oh, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that. Well, no, no, no. I didn't. I don't have a degree in it. I studied. Oh, I studied okay. conducting, conducting and piano performance in college. Yeah, and I thought I was going to write movie music and conduct it. And this was in a, Chicago, yeah. right? This is in Chicago. Yeah, right. We're from and sister the, cities. I'm Toronto. You're Chicago. Toronto, Chicago. Yeah. And by the way, they look and feel exactly the same. They do a lot. Um, and then yeah, so I did that, and then I said, and I was doing. I was a music director out of college, right, at a dinner theater in St. Charles, where I'm still really close with all those guys. Fantastic. And I would be in the little tiny orchestra pit conducting and playing, and then I'd be like, well, that's. I mean, in high school and college, I did some you know theater, so I was like, I, I kind of miss being up there. It looks like they're having so much fun. So then I would understudy some parts, uh, and then I was cast in some musicals at that dinner theater. And then I was like, well, this is so much more fun. And then I started auditioning in Chicago. Then I got started getting commercials in Chicago. And then I said, I think I have enough ammo to get at least a commercial agent in LA. So, and I'm young enough that I can have a plan B to fall back on, come back to Chicago and just be a mu- musician, something. And then I got this indie film, Billy's Hollywood Screen Kiss, yes. uh, which premiered at Sundance in 1998, at which time I had two Super Bowl commercials on. <laughs> That I was, <laughs> one I was the star of, and one I was in that famous Doritos with Ali Landry where the Doritos are shooting out of the dryer at the laundromat. Right. And then, so I had that movie and two Super Bowls. So they ha- I had a lot of, quote, heat, as they say in Hollywood. Yeah. And then- And that um, was just before I met you, because the Super Bowl would have yeah. been, you know, what, three weeks before we did our first, or two weeks yeah. even. And then while I was at Sun, like, Sundance, like you said, I got yeah. the script for Will and Grace. I flew back and I auditioned. And I remember Max Muchnick, I was saying, can I shake the cage when I ask, when I get angry? Because I had a bird cage. Right. That's right. I had my Guapo. pet bird. Guapo the bird. Guapo. And then, um, God, you remember so much more than I do. And then, so Guapo was in the cage. And I was like, is it okay before I go and read for the network and the studio and everybody that decides if you get the part, is it okay if I shake the cage when I get angry? He's like, yes, of course, do that, do that. And um, I don't know, that was, I was, for some reason, I was relaxed and I'm never relaxed in auditions. But anyway, that's my story. Yeah, that, that's, and it was, it's a great story. And I, I'd forgotten, I didn't forget about the movie, but I'd forgotten about the Super Bowl commercials. I mean, yeah, you were, you were a, a catch and you had other choices and you could very easily have said, I'm not doing a sitcom because I have a movie at Sundance. Um, yeah, but I mean, yeah. it's the closest thing to theater. So it's like, this feels yeah. uh, com- comfortable because it is theater, right? Isn't it? It's just the only thing it that's is. different is I, there's four cameras. Been, I realized that a big piece of what I've been missing about the show, because we finished the reboot three years ago now, um, is the laugh wow. part of it. It's, it's great yeah, it's to, so to fun. do laughs, but I we were one of the last um, sort of fully functioning 250 people in the audience uh, records every week, and uh, I, I really miss it. But I wanted yeah. I wanted to bring up that thing about conducting because I remember you didn't in any way lead with that. I didn't know that about you for a while. In fact, I feel like we were doing the Just Jack episode, and and you were playing <laughs> piano, and I remember thinking, "Oh, you can play the piano, uh, <laughs> folks." <laughs> well, this guy. <laughs> Uh, just just go to Broadway, go to Broadway this summer and see Goodnight Oscar and you will realize that uh, he could have just been a, an incredible concert pianist. Clown. Um, yeah, you, could no, been, well, you, you could have been Victor Borga. That's what you could have been. Well, you know what's great about all of us? And thank you for saying that. That's very sweet, honey. The, that we all have talent. 
that other than acting like you have this unfucking believable phenomenal voice and so does megan and so does yeah. deborah sometimes which she would laugh at me saying that yeah <laughs> <laughs> pretty, pretty positive she would yeah. say maybe but she also when she sings like for real she has a pretty voice but i know on the show they always made grace sing like over the top which always made me laugh so hard i mean all of us <laughs> laugh so hard <laughs> So wait, I want to hear your story like mine, like the big chunks. Um, I got into the theater in high school and I was actually making money in the theater when I was 18. Yeah. And that's all I did through my 20s. I think my first television audition wasn't even till I was 26, 27. Um, and that was all in Canada. Everything was in Canada. So I still hadn't left. And when I finally moved from Toronto to Vancouver, I'm still in Canada, but I started doing some American series. This would have been 92. Mm -hmm. Um, and I did a couple of pilot seasons with, you know, the zero results. Um, the second, actually the second one in 94, I had a callback for Ross on friends. Oh, you did. Oh, yeah. that's right. You told me that. And yeah. something about Jesse too. Um, I don't did you I, read I for can't Jesse? remember if I had that, uh, that was, or the no, what was that other show? show. I did. Oh man. Townies. Oh, townies. You're right. Townies. Yes. I did five or six episodes as uh, Jenna Elfman's boyfriend. I was a weatherman. Mm -hmm. And um, I felt like I was, all, I was probably, what, 32? I felt like I was 100 somehow. I yeah. already <laughs> felt old because everyone was so young. Ron Livingston was on that show. Well, and, and I looked at you like, oh, you had all of these credits. And I was like, oh my God, this guy's a genius. Like I was so envious because, you know, Will and Grace is the first thing I ever did. Well, and but it's, it, in many ways, it was the first thing I ever did that that mattered in television. But I had done a bunch of sort of bad um, guest stars on a lot of mediocre shows. I did I did a season um, shot this in Vancouver of a show called Street Justice. It was Carl Ooh. Weathers and myself. Uh, uh -huh. Sounds serious. Grade. It was very serious. As it was a Stephen J. Cannell show, so it was that sort of neon yes. lit cop show, and yeah. he wore gloves with no fingers in them, so you knew he was, he was <laughs> badass, like and, silk stockings. Like, Remember oh, all I those old a, shows? I did a silk stocking. I did too. <laughs> yeah, too. so crazy. It was bad, but so I was getting used to that, and meanwhile. I was watching Seinfeld and I was watching ER yeah. and going, D -d -d I've got to do something great. Yeah, and, and, and that's right. An actor would have killed to be on NBC at that time. Right. Right. It was like a dream. But the one thing I did get, and this is uh, important because I thought, A, I thought it was going to set me down a certain path and B, it's where I met my wife. I did two seasons of a show called Lonesome oh, Dove. Dove, right. Where right. I was like, I had long hair and a beard. Yeah, you were and like a dangerous. badass. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, talk, talk about acting because it's the opposite of who I am. But yeah. but I thought, oh, I guess this is what I'll do. Well, at the time, there was no Yellowstone. I mean, this, was, this show was a bit of an anomaly. Nobody wanted. Uh, I got to LA after it ended. Nobody wanted the long hair or the beard at the time. Is that so. why you had the long hair for the episode, for the pilot of Will and Grace? So I cut my hair, you know, I was told, you know, shave your beard, cut your hair. And for that would have been for, I guess, the 95 pilot season in L.A. But I just, yeah. I, I had had a beard for two years. I didn't look, I didn't, couldn't figure out who I looked like. I didn't look chiseled yeah. like the Melrose Place people. So I kind of drifted along for those two years doing townies or whatever. But it was... When I got that script for Will and Grace, this would have been December of 97, yeah. and I had been f I'd let go. Let's not say fired. I'd been let go <laughs> after the pilot of, uh, of the let Jenny go. McCarthy show. They discontinued the character. They went a different way, blah, blah, blah. Let him go. Let him go. Let him go. And uh, so the one that I thought, oh, maybe that's my one shot at sitcom, which at the time was so... So huge, you know, yeah. it's, it, it had gone through the sort of uncomfortable 80s and 90s. And, and, and we now we're into the Seinfeld and Friends and it, it was, and Frasier. I yeah, mean, yeah. what a also time at yeah, what my mid-30s to go, I have to, please, <laughs> have to have a show like that. Right. There was buzz around this this script and a couple of my friends who yeah. were actors they're like oh you should go there's this great script you should go and uh i was like well it's not like something you sign up for like in the high school hallway like you know <laughs> like you have to actually get like an appointment like yeah. through your agent but to your point yeah there was like rumblings about this one particular script and it was so good and um 
And but the other thing I wanted to say about shooting pilots, isn't it? It's so it's so ass backwards. It's like people shoot for example, especially for sitcoms, they'll shoot a pilot. Then you have to wait to see if it gets picked up. Yeah. Then they pick it up and you start an episode two, but it's a year later, so you don't look anything like episode one. True. Although back then, particularly with network, I, it seems like it happened faster. I mean, we we shot in March. We knew by May. That, oh, yeah, that's true. You know what I mean? So it was well, only we didn't months. start, but so it was like six months, maybe. But um, yeah, by the time we shot in August, yeah, it had been almost six months. But I mean, nowadays, other series I've been doing, it's like you can shoot a whole 10 episodes and they won't air for a year. I know. It's like I a know. movie. And you're like, well, but but I, a year from now, I won't even remember how to promote it. I don't remember my character's name. There was, a, yeah. there was kind of an immediacy, particularly with sitcom, because- they wanted 22 or 24 and they wanted them in three weeks. And so I think that's why I became so familiar with them is that I, of course I was going to watch it. I want to see what we just did and did it work. Right. And, and but I, let me, but let me get into your head for a little bit, because I think this is interesting. Like I, I find this interesting. Did you feel like, um, hi Eric, by the way, <laughs> hey, buddy, <laughs> this is life. This, this is what is, we're doing with our life. I know we're, we're, we're talking about our life. We're talking about the life just we a, live. A moment, a moment of presentness. <laughs> Um, okay. So, but this is what, what I've all, I want to know is cause you, to me, you were like a star, right? Cause you did Lonesome Dove and I knew this before you started and I thought, oh my God, he's like this leading man on this massive drama. But it's funny that you said you didn't feel like you quote made it until the Will and Grace program. But to me on the outside, you did because you, you are a working actor. So I know what you right. mean because Will and Grace is this big hit, but but aside I, yeah, from I that, that you a, feel a, like you didn't make it. Like to me, you did. Well, I, I appreciate that. And, and, and certainly I, at the time, it wasn't that I felt a failure. I just was, I could feel that my, um, my expiry date was coming. <laughs> that, that maybe, yeah, yeah. you know, that, that watch the cast of Friends or whatever. These, the, the big shows were suddenly younger people. They didn't used to be. When I was trying to get into the business, everything was 30 something and, all the, mm -hmm. everyone on shows were in their forties, and then suddenly it shifted. I sort of after Mel Melrose Place, and it was like, yeah. "Am I suddenly too old for the thing I was too young for?" A few. <laughs> oh years my god! Ago? At thirty-two, you thought that? Yeah, I just thought, "How am I going to?" And luckily, as I've learned down the road, uh, a hard thing to find in general is is a comic leading man because they have to yeah. do both, and particularly for that role, it suited me well because I didn't. Like you were with Jack, I'm, I don't walk in the door and and yeah. I'm hilarious. I I have to kind of be the sort of center of the crazy storm, and uh, and that suited me. As I get older, your style of comedy, I'm more of a fan of your style of comedy than I am the loud, brash, obnoxious kind of over the top physical. I mean, I love physical comedy, but you know what I'm saying. Like I'm also, I think more so now as I've seen those 15 seconds, 30 seconds of you performing on the show, I truly, truly, and I said this to you at lunch, you and Deb and Megan, of course, all made me laugh so hard, but the subtlety of you and Deb's relationship and your comedy makes me laugh harder than I make myself laugh, you know, on the show. You know, the, I, I, I'm I, more of a fan of, of how quiet this, and Megan had a lot of those moments too as Karen. You yeah, know, um, well, Megan had a, a whole other level of confidence where... You know, yeah, she just yeah, for sure. having come from the theater too. She she could be hilariously big, but there's some of the stuff she would mutter, yeah, uh, <laughs> at sitting so at the desk funny. to herself was that that takes a kind of I've been around for a little while confidence. Uh, yeah, that, yeah, very uh, great. Yeah, I always Iconic. thought it was fantastic. Well, yeah, but I mean that was that was the weird part of the show that we didn't necessarily see coming. We're going to talk about this when everybody's done their homework and watch yeah. the pilot. I, know. But, um, I can't wait to watch it. I, I haven't know. seen it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't think ever. The pilot was sort of meant to be Will and Grace. And then I have a friend and she has a friend. Right. And what uh, ensued after that, particularly comedically uh, between you and, uh, and Megan was just sort of unpredictable, unpredicted. They didn't yeah. see it coming. And uh, neither did America. <laughs> I remember the table read 
I, I said something, whatever my first line was, and the writers and everybody laughed. And I was like, I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> like uh, all I said was hi, Will, or whatever. <laughs> but I know there, there, it was encouraging laughter, you know. But I, I never felt that. I've never experienced. It. I'll never forget it. Which is like, wait, wh- I don't know what I'm doing, and you're laughing. Like I don't understand. Well, I think I've told the story before because I just adore it. But I went in for my very first audition as Will. Yeah, this is what I want to hear. Yeah, yeah, and I, I'd already kind of recognized that it's pretty great. It was, it was beautifully written, and I could. See that if I was going to find a way in, it m- might be through this, this character. Um, and in the middle of this, of telling a story, I want you yeah. to add what it's like, what your decision was like playing a gay guy, as, as being a straight person. Right. Well, that, so that would come next. So I didn't think twice about, I had at this point in December of 97, I'd played eight gay characters, I think on, on television, on, on the commission of a couple of Canadian shows. I'd been in the theater for years and played several drag characters. So it, it didn't, it was nothing to me at that moment. I, I just, in fact, I thought maybe that's my way in because I can, he's kind of a, what they re- used to refer to anyway, as a straight acting gay man. He right, was, right, you know, right. But I walked in and I did this one scene. It was a park bench scene with Grace that didn't even end up in the show. And right at the end of the scene, Max, the uh, the gay one of our two creators stood up and said, okay, just so you know, <laughs> you never need to be more gay than that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> And I was like, Dad? Yeah. Uh, but I, <laughs> but I, I, Bravo. I kind Wait, of. Wait, you just, you read by yourself. You didn't read with anybody. Right, exactly. But I just, I was yeah. reading with, uh, we should mention her, Tracy, Tracy Lillianfeld, our, uh, our, our great casting director. Yeah, um, Tracy Lillianfeld. Who got all, all four of us. But I was, it was actually a great note because it didn't occur to me to come in and, and put something on. I just thought I can see on the page. He's, um, he's probably pretty close to me. So yeah. that freed me to um, to not question that part of it. Well, um, another Canadian reference, uh, right? It's like British, maybe. They're, they're all kind. Of, they're all just <laughs> everybody's what? just a little bit gay, <laughs> right? Is that what Marty? Is that what Marty Short says? <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. Um, um, yeah. So, yeah, so no. that was that was the beginning. I had several auditions after that. Yeah. How many? And how, did you? How many times did you have to test? So I did one or two auditions and was pretty much told unofficially this is this is yours we can't do anything about it now because the network's not seeing anybody till the new year but you know just have a good christmas we'll see you and yeah. something happened over christmas for me people have said to me did you suddenly doubt that you should play a game and it was like no not that, that had nothing to do with it in fact i thought that was the thing about the show that was going to make it that's interesting yeah rise above the rest i, I suddenly just got afraid of commitment of 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 that idea that this was my sam malone this was this could right. be the thing on my on my tombstone you know, could and be I, worse yeah well yeah as it turns out you know 25 years later i couldn't be more grateful but at the time it was like maybe you knew sh- it's only it's only december maybe in january that that great thing so i sort of pulled myself out of the running uh, oh really i didn't know that yeah i literally just said i think i'm gonna you know i don't don't rely on me i'm gonna read for some other things and i'm in vancouver living in the small place that my wife and i had in vancouver and i got a call one morning and it was max muchnick who i'd only met in that audition i mean yeah. we had not become friends and he he called me and he said it's max Muchnick." i said hi he said i'm just calling to tell you that you just made the biggest mistake of your life <laughs> And you could hear Max saying that, right? And I was uh-huh. like, well, w- wow, like, you don't know me. I just finished a drama and I'm just not sure if this is the thing. And he said, just, that's all I want to say. And it haunted me over the holidays. And I just remember waking up one morning, maybe right after New Year's in, in Vancouver. And I turned to my wife and I said, I think I made a terrible mistake. And she said, yeah. I think maybe oh, you God. Did. Yeah, but you didn't pass on it, really. Well, you I didn't pass. Said, I, I did, pulled myself out of the running, so I could easily yeah. have been, you know, somebody else could yeah, have come yeah. in. Yeah. Um, so luckily, it was over the holidays when nobody pays any attention to much. But I, we called back and said, is the role cast yet? And they said no. And so the rest is history. But when I came back, there was maybe a, maybe one more audition and then uh, uh, for the studio. And then it was like, you're going to network. But first, you have to meet Jimmy. Yeah, and Jimmy went, Burrows. Yes, well, I didn't know that at the time. It's when Jimmy, and then that's when that, that giant Jim. shoe landed on my Jimmy's head. Jimmy's like the guy who works in the back. He's a yeah. gaffer. Yeah. You just you just needed to meet Jimmy's, Jimmy. Jimmy's my bookie. 
And uh, <laughs> I just got, I got, I yeah. need his approval. Yeah, Jimmy Burrow is the greatest of all sitcom directors ever. And and I didn't, I hadn't heard at that point that he was directing. So for me, well, that, that was, yeah. was Giants. Yeah, that was, um, you know, my audition thing was, I went in and, and read for uh, Max Mushnick and David Cohen, the creators. And and I think I actually read with David Cohen, I think. Did you? I think, or Max, one of them. And then I was done with the scene and they were sitting down on a couch and I was standing in front of them reading. And then you know how when you turn your body to exit a room, you just natch your eyes naturally fall on people's asses, right? <laughs> you just you just naturally, sure. especially if you're sitting down and somebody walks out of the room and they're standing, your eyes just go to their ass. Like of it's, it's just a it's just a human thing. And so I as I was leaving, I said, without turning around, I know you're all staring at my ass right now. <laughs> and I just left. And, uh, <laughs> and that was the moment. And that's, I mean, and that was, there's that, well, that, I that's think years later, jack. Max, I remember Max saying that that was, that was it. That was what sealed yeah, that the was deal. It. Was him and, saying, um, don't look at my ass, Matt, much next. And then, but the Jimmy Burroughs part of it, uh, I, obviously we all know who he was and is. So they said, it's James Burroughs. And I was like, from Cheers, from Friends, mm -hmm. from, all of the, from Taxi, from Mary Tyler Moore. Oh my God, I know, I know this guy. And so that's when we did the table. We did like a pre-table read before we, we did it in front of the network in the studio at Max Muchnick's house. Oh, that's and right. And so, right? And so we show up and that's the first time I met Megan. And the first time we met, we yeah. met each other, everybody. We, we first met. And, um, and I was like, oh my God, who's this cool chick? Because Megan and I parked at the same time. We got there at the same time. And she got out of her car and I was like, oh my God, she's so cool. She's dressed in black. She's got these Massive, she was like, very Franken downtown. Frankenstein platform yeah. shoes on. I just thought it was so super cool. And then we walked in and I met you and Devin. Everybody was so nice. And then Jim Burroughs walks in and I'm like, I got really scared. I got so scared. I was like, I don't deserve it. Like, how am I, how am I worthy of this? Why am I here? I don't deserve this. And then, um, I, you know, you stuff all those feelings and yeah. you fake it. Of course. And then, but it's like, oh, sure. Yeah. I'm working with Jimmy Burroughs. Like it's a, something a person does. Like, yeah. you know, normally it was, I was blown away. Yeah. Uh, something that I had forgotten. Yeah. There, were, there were five characters. Cress Williams. Yeah. Right. So there were five characters as, as regulars. And the yeah. fifth was my partner in my small law firm. Cause right. I had my own law firm. It was very small. And, uh, and he, so they, I think they figured that he would be, our friendship would be just as, uh, as important or play as much of a, as a uh, time on 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 the screen like the, as, like as the opposite of Jack for you. Yeah, straight yeah. guy. <laughs> I think written probably as as Jewish, and yet in the end, it was Cress Williams who went brilliant. On, who went on to? Oh, he played a superhero on, on um, CW a few years ago, and I can't remember which one. Not Flash, but and it was also an. Uh, I think he was on ER. He was on. And I, I think so for a while. ER, and he, then uh, and he was in my acting class before the show. Before the show. Oh wow, crazy! I Isn't that crazy? That. But yeah. he um. It was just one of those things where two days in, and I wasn't aware of this. I'm not thinking with this kind of critical eye or ear, yeah. but I, Jimmy just went to the boys and said, it's, it's just too, it's too many. It's one finger too many. We did this, 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 this these four of the show. And, uh, and I felt so terrible. I it was know, nothing he too. did or didn't do. It was just a kind of, kind of like my character on the Jenny McCarthy show the year before. It's just didn't fit fit what the show was supposed to be so i mean right i know huge. isn't that wild for I, I it's not like i forget about crest i just forget about that process because i was so young and i couldn't believe i was on a show and i wasn't thinking about anything but my lines and oh my god i'm so scared i'm so nervous and then when you just say it's like oh my god that's right there was there was five regular characters yeah and um and then there were four during the week and then there were four and eventually a couple of years in you know um um uh, Shelley became a big part oh, of the show, right, yeah. kind of the fifth Beatle. Shelley Morrison, who played, um, uh, who played Rosario. Rosario. But uh, but yeah. for for that first year, it was it was just us. But it is a reminder, and we've heard these stories so many times about Lisa Kudrow or Perry Gilbert. Like it, the the pilot process can be just so nerve wracking because you have yeah. the job. Sort I know, of. but you, you may but, lose it but at any moment. Yeah, exactly. I walked in the first. This year, every single day, I was like, "There's no way I'm not getting fired. I'm getting fired." None I tried. I tried. I tried every time, every week. I was like, "And he's still playing Jack." And I'm like, "Yeah." <laughs> you try to get me fired? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I get it. 
I get it. That makes sense. Um, he's too loud and annoying. <laughs> um, but wait, I want to know uh, how you'll be watching the show before we do every episode of this podcast. Will you wa- like? Will you be watching with Janet, your your wife? Will you not be watching with Janet? W- are you excited to watch the shows now and talk about them? Like, I'm super, super excited. I'm well. I'm excited. I'm excited. I think I would be great if you and I could watch a few together. That's I know. What we let's have do that do. for sure. For sure. I'll come over to your house. What do we do? It, what do we do? Take notes while we watch them. I don't know how this works. Th- it's only 22 minutes long. I don't think it'll be a thing. But but I just I would actually love to watch it with you and and watch that response. And also because there's certain episodes I remember very well, and I realize there's got to be a whole bunch of others that I don't. Yeah. So for those of you who, like Sean, have not seen the show in a long time, mm-hmm. uh, there's good news. Hulu has got the entire series uh, to be watched whenever you want. So just, Running right uh, now, right? Yeah, exactly. So you can watch any episode. Hopefully, uh, you can watch the episode before we do it, week uh, week after week. Yeah, uh, or maybe plan. you've got old DVDs left over from the old by the days. Way, by the way, I have the DVDs. I have them. I do too. I never do too. put it, never put them in. <laughs> and I think ultimately the show will be on the cock. Uh, on the cock, <laughs> right? Yeah, I hope so. Uh, on the peacock, I hope so. It isn't right now. To my knowledge, you can't just go to the cock. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we'll speak for yourself. <laughs> uh, yes, you. I know it's available to you at all times. But uh, <laughs> it is. Uh, it is yes, I'm excited to watch it, and it, but but also with this new eye, the pilot. Oh my god, we're going to watch yeah. the pilot, the Just Jack and Will episode about the pilot with our special guest, co-creator Max Muchnick, is also available right now. So you can head over mm-hmm. and listen to that. Watch it first, and then head over and listen yeah, to that. Yeah, I'm going to watch it first. I can't wait. In addition to guests that we'll have on every week to talk about the show, we also want to hear from you guys. Truly, what do you want to know about Will and Grace, especially season one? And of course, we'd love the questions to be about the specific episodes we are covering. So if you have a question, anything, anything, uh, that you're dying to ask us, email us at just Jack and Will. That's with the word and spelled out. Just Jack and Will at gmail.com. Or you can leave us a voicemail at 818 308 4012. That number again, 818 308 4012. You can leave a voicemail and we will play it, your voice on the show, and answer your question. Yeah. So watch. The pilot of Will and Grace uh, right now on on Hulu and check out that episode, which exists. It's there for you. And also watch uh, episode two, A New Lease on Life, before we do our Just Jack and Will show next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When our guest will be Mr. Jimmy Burroughs, the great and powerful Jimmy Burroughs. So- <laughs> You've got your homework. We'll talk to you again on Just Jack and Will. Just Jack and Will is produced by Smartless Media. Produced, engineered, and edited by Devin Tory Bryant. That's me. Our talent producer is Ann Harris. Our associate producer is Maddie McCann. Invaluable assistance by Michelle Laparo and Nick Dote. Music by Scotty Eisnogel and Leora Rosner, although the Just Jack and Will sting is my fault. Executive producers are Will Arnett, Jason Bateman, and Sean Hayes. Executive producers for Smartless Media are Richard Corson and Bernie Kaminsky. Meet you back here next week for more Just Jack and Will. Smart. Less. Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Just Jack and Will early and ad-free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today. Or you can listen early and ad-free with Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts. Before you go, tell us about yourself by completing a short survey at wondery.com slash survey.